ancient city of Naples, its harbor facilities and waterfront installations destroyed, sees with the coming of the Allies perhaps the most welcome invasion in all its centuries-old history. From huge landing boats driven right up on the beach, new contingents of American Army nurses wait ashore to join field units and hospitals serving the Allied Fifth Army. hands stand by to aid in the landing. To American soldiers overseas, these courageous nurses recruited by the Red Cross are much more than angels of mercy. They're girls from home, girls like the boys' own sisters in Kansas or Ohio. And after 3,000 miles on the ocean, they're glad to be ashore. Some are assigned to duty with the Air Forces. Others have volunteered to serve in huge transport ships engaged in the evacuation of wounded by air. Many nurses accepted for service aloft once flew as hostesses in commercial airliners. All were specially trained for this new duty in schools operated by the Army Air Force. In a matter of hours, they are flown direct to combat areas. That Red Cross flag indicates that wounded are aboard. These are the men they serve, men whose chances for life have been increased with the saving of each precious minute gained through evacuation by air. <music> Evacuating as many as 400 stretcher cases from one sector in a single day, planes cover in three hours distances that normally would require a week's travel. A nurse and a staff sergeant work together, 24 such teams to a squadron. In many instances, life-giving blood plasma is administered en route. Patients receive every attention to make their journey as comfortable as possible. Often, a flight surgeon accompanies emergency cases. Today, evacuation of wounded by air is saving countless lives that otherwise might be lost. At Evansville, Indiana, men in uniform make a beeline for the Red Cross canteen. Servicemen passing through the city are loud in their praise of Hoosier hospitality. Here, they're welcome to free cigarettes, the latest magazine, and the smile of the canteen corps girl completes the transaction. While a group of budding artists form their own quartet, volunteers staff the kitchen preparing home-cooked food. All meals, of course, are planned by the Red Cross Nutrition Service. This is typical of Red Cross canteens from coast to coast. Friendly haven, where boys away from home can get the nearest thing to food like mother used to make. Another phase of Red Cross canteen service is shown in the mobile unit operation at Memphis, Tennessee Airport. Here, men of the Air Transport Ferry Command can get hot coffee a hasty snack while waiting for their plane. At another part of the field, a permanent canteen, housed in a hangar, serves complete meals. Yes, those southern cooks sure know how to bake a cake. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania Red Cross chapter solves the problem, what to do with Junior while Mother visits the blood donor center. <music> Mrs. Ralph Ditlow suggested a nursery room to care for the youngsters while Mother makes her donation. So once a week is Mother's Day. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
A Red Cross nurse and a nurse's aide are on hand to help take care of the youngsters. Here is an excellent example of community cooperation. The Veterans Hospital at Fort Snelling, Minnesota, receives a visit from the Junior Red Cross of the Minneapolis and St. Paul chapters. Transported by the Motor Corps, the youngsters bring new life to men who have fought in three of our wars. For in addition to the veterans of World Wars I and II, there are old timers here who remember the main. From gray ladies in attendance, they receive books, games, puzzles provided by the Junior Red Cross. Ash receivers, lamp bases, chess boards are built by the juniors in their school workshop. Whether it's making canes, crutches, or card racks, the junior skill and resourcefulness is more than appreciated by the men they serve. Lap boards and stationary folders are made in classrooms. Many of the plants in the solarium are from the year-round garden at nearby Minnehaha School. Entertainment provided by Junior Red Cross groups is a regular feature at Fort Snelling Hospital. The Girls' Choral Society is always a big hit. A gymnastic team made up of Junior Red Cross members highlights the program. A stellar attraction here, the boys bring the house with a patriotic finale. Somewhere in Australia, an all-army band at one of the many overseas clubs enlivens the evening for troops on leave from the front. Here, they meet nice girls, get a chance to cut a rug, just like a Saturday night back home. Providing recreation is an important part of Red Cross service to the armed forces. And G.I. Joe seems to be enjoying the hospitality in the land down under. One of the nation's four packaging centers for prisoners of war, Red Cross volunteers pack the boxes of food provided by the United States government for American soldiers in enemy hands. Enough food in each 11-pound parcel to sustain a man for a week. In 1943, the Red Cross shipped seven million prisoner of war packages overseas. To American boys behind barbed wire, the arrival of these Red Cross boxes means as much to their morale as to their health. For more than food chosen for its maximum nutritional content, the package represents home, tells them that we have not forgotten. Something of the importance of these parcels is expressed by two American flyers just returned from a German prison camp. There are two things that the boys we left behind in the prison camp are very interested in making known uh, to their parents and to all Americans. Uh, the first is concerning mail. Uh, it's a great thing for the boys in camp to get a letter from home. It really cheers them up. And the next thing that they look forward to very much uh, in getting is their Red Cross parcels. Isn't that right, Al? Yes, Glenn. The American Red Cross is really doing a wonderful job for the boys in the prison camp. Boys depend on it over there, so don't let them down. Mm -hmm. 